to make it a repeat where Cop was able to finish ahead of Carr in their in their heat in the very first race of the evening. Cop pulling away. What's this? Cop's got. I mean, he, he had his tire warmed up or something. Boy, that guy's on a mission. But look how Joe's bike's popping around, jumping around when he enters turn three and tries. He's going right through the center of them holes. He's not going inside of them. Chris Carr trying to close up some ground. Rich King behind him. The 21 of Jared Mees, the youngster, just losing a spot to. Kenny Coolbath, yep. 31. He just drove her right inside of him. And now Kenny, he's he's got that number 80 in his sights. Well, aside from the factory Harley Davidson, number 80 of Rich King, we've got teammates. The KTM USA sponsor, Joe Kopp and Ken Coolbath. The quality check riders, Chris Carr, Willie McCoy, yet to make his presence known at the front, but he's coming. He's right behind Jared Meese on the 21 bike. And there is the 80 of Rich King coming under attack from the 31 of Coolbath. So Coolbath is studying Factory Harley Davidson number 80 rider. What's he seeing, Steve Moore? Well, he's, seen, he's noticing Rich mo Rich's motorcycle down at the other end seems to be moving around quite a bit in the rear end. Willie McCoy on the number 59, definitely in the picture now. But it is Joe Cobb out in front, Chris Carr chasing him, and it's Carr that's going to come under pressure first if these guys keep going the way they do. <laughs> well, it's hard to pass right yet. I mean, it, it's really hard to lead one of these races because you don't know how aggressive you really have to be, and the track will change before this 25-lap race is over to where these guys are going to be moving around on the racetrack. Who finds the sweet spot or the moisture first, and how late in the race is it? If you pass me too soon, and then you have time to go to go do your homework and figure out another way back by me, Brian. Rich King holding off Ken Coolbeth for the moment. You get the feeling, though, that Coolbeth is definitely seeing a little something. He's just waiting to pull the trigger. Now King gets a little bit of a gap going down the straightaway. That factory bike is fast. Well, it is fast, but it just looks like it's pretty twitchy in the middle of the corner sometimes. You know, Rich is really sets up on the gas tanker. He's got a long seat because there's a lot of space between the back of the tail section and the seat, and it just gets to wiggling now and then through there, and it breaks loose right there. It breaks traction. You've seen a puff of dust come off the rear tire. Chris Carr running in second position, a rather distant second at this point as Joe Kopp is all but checked out. The best battle on the track is the one we're watching for third. Oh, bad move. Rich just looked back at seen Kenny, and, and it's too early in the race to be looking back. You know there's 18 other guys back, or 16 other guys back there. When there's only two in front of you, yeah. it doesn't take a math genius to figure out how many <laughs> up are behind you. Well, it took me a minute to figure it out, but I didn't look back. <laughs> They're all behind They're you. They're back there, you bet, and they're coming, they're hungry. Here comes Ken Coolbath trying to get up to the back tire there, and he's almost made it as Rich King, no more looking back now, he knows where the challenge is coming from. Jared Meese on the 21 bike, he's just waiting for a mistake because if Kenny can get inside of him, maybe he can push Rich out of the way and then open up the door for 21 and, uh, Willie McCoy to slide through back here. Oh, there's, oh, look at that, that's a great move, great move around the outside. Rich was kind of fumbling there. Kenny moved up on the racetrack, found him some moisture, and just took advantage of that little bit of fumbling mistake there that Rich made. The bike wobbled a little bit. Now Rich moved up off the black. Thought, mm, there must be something there. And he's looking back a lot, which doesn't tell us, which tells us a little something about the mindset of Rich King. As we go out front once again, Joe Cobb making this one look like a runaway, but the points leader Chris Carr might have something to say about that before it's done. I'm staying. Main event action continues here at the Black Hills Speedway round 10 of the AMA US Flat Track Progressive Insurance Championship here. Chris Carr getting closer to the leader, Joe Kopp, who was making it look like a runaway. Ken Coolbeth in third place, likely, as I should say, similarly. And Rich King is out of the race. I believe he has broken his toy. It has become unstarted, as they say. Well, they're looking at something on the back of that motorcycle. I don't quite know what, but Kenny Coolbeth made that great move around the outside of Rich King, and he's still moving to the outside edge of that black mark on the racetrack. So he's found some moisture out there or he's moving around because he's able to do it. Now Chris Carr, you see him up a little bit higher than what Joe Kopp is. Joe Kopp, the only thing he can do is he's committed to that black mark. He's not about to get off it. They're going to have to show him something different for him to change. So now he's a little bit below it because they talked about earlier in the heat races, the moisture was coming up on the bottom of that groove. Now how much is above around the outside? Cop took a quick look back there a couple of laps ago. If he looks to the inside, he's going to not see Chris Carr move around the outside to take the lead. So the number one points leader takes it away from Joe Cop, and there are still a lot of laps to go. Let's see if Cop's got a counterattack. 
you run that tight line like that, Brian, you don't carry as much corner speed. If you can get up on the racetrack and let your momentum, and that's exactly what Chris had. He had more, more momentum through the middle of the corner when he hit the apex, got back on the gas, his momentum up on top of the racetrack. Just that outer edge carried him right on by the outside of Joe. Cool Beth goes for a tear off and the two KTM USA sponsored riders are second and third behind Chris Carr on his uh, quality check certified pre-owned Ford entry number one, carrying the plate they all won at the end of this season. Well, Joe, he moved up. Now he's going to follow Chris and try to figure out how in the world did you do that? I'm blocking the groove and you passed me. Now, now Carr is kind of blocking that high line just a little bit. He's going to force Cop to go either very low or way around the outside. Way around the outside because, you know, Chris, Chris didn't forget how he passed him. But, you know, now he's kind of pulling back down where Joe did a little bit. And Kenny Kulba say, hey, both you guys get out of my way. I'm faster than you both. Back to the fifth place battle. And look at this. Five bikes going for it. Three bikes up front. Five bikes going for fifth. And they're all led at the moment by Jake Johnson on the number 14 machine. Johnson, we've got Terry Poovey, we got uh, Johnny Murphy, we got Joe, Joe Roeder and uh, Sean Russell all back there together. So this is quite the battle here and the 14 of Jake Johnson getting the best of it at the moment. But a challenge uh, is starting to mount here. Look at the third place machine coming up there. The number 20 bike, Johnny Murphy making a move on the outside. Handlebar to handlebar, can't make it stick. Well, he knows it's there. He's going to continue working on that. you got Sean Russell back there behind 66. Out front, it is still Jake Johnson. This is the battle for fifth. We go to the lead, and you can see that four bikes are now involved as Willie McCoy has joined the party. And well, we've got the teammates going on. Willie McCoy was marred back in eighth or ninth at the beginning of this race, so he's made a lot of great passes. So catching these guys and passing them is two different things, Brian. Chris Carr with that classic style, foot out, toe to the inside, right elbow straight in the air when he goes through the corners. Cop with a little more squared up sort of style, and Chris Carr out in front. There it is, you can see. The little man on that number one machine can really make it work. This is a big night for the big for the points championship. You know, Joe Cop hat knows he has to finish in front of Chris Carr if he wants to close the gap on that point spread. Well, the difference between first and second is four points. That'll nibble into that 29 point lead that Carr has pretty well. Just as we move into the second half of the season, Cop around the outside. Is Carr going to let him have it? No, he has to let him have it. There's no doubt. Joe Cop got a great run off turn four. And when Chris shut off going into turn one, Joe just run it in a little bit higher on that outside edge of that group. I'll tell you, Chris Carr brings out the best in all these riders because he is a true professional. I mean, he is the, the, the people's champion. And Joe Cop and Kenny Coolbeth, I mean, these four guys are chomping at the bit every week trying to figure out how to beat Chris and Kenny Talbert because they are so consistent and so good each week. So Chris Carr running in second Ooh. position way up on the outside. That opens the door for the third place, Ken Coolbeth, who can't capitalize. And now it's the final lap. Chris Carr, he, tr he tried to run it in there hard going into turn one, just caught his foot, slid up on the racetrack. Now he's going to have to try to chase down Joe Kopp with only a half lap yet to go. Kopp riding a perfect line into three and four. If he can bring it home on the front straightaway here, and he does, he's going to take the win and make up points on Chris Carr for the championship. Joe Kopp wins at Black Hills Speedway round number 10, and we're still battling back behind him for all the spots left on the racetrack. Here's George Roeder pulling into, I believe, ninth position ahead of Jake Johnson, who will round out the top 10. There's your winner. That was great race. You got two teammates there, Willie McCoy and Chris Carr, congratulating one another. But there's one happy man, number three, Joe Kopp. Came in here needing the points, needing to beat Chris Carr. Was passed by Carr, took the lead back. It doesn't get any sweeter than that. Joe rode his guts out tonight. He rode that motorcycle to perfection. He figured it out. You know, what more can you say? I mean, he's determined. And he will stand on the podium with his teammate, Ken Coolbeth, who finished in third position. As all of these riders are celebrating and acknowledging the fans, we'll hear from them when we come back. Insurance U.S. Flat Track Championship has been brought to you by Quality Check, Ford's only authorized, certified, pre-owned program. By Progressive Insurance, title sponsor of the AMA Progressive Insurance U.S. Flat Track Championship. By Harley Davidson, the legend rolls on. And by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Joe, that one has to make you feel great.
Uh, you were run down, passed, and then you got him back. Yeah, you know, I didn't know who was coming. I looked back a few times and seen somebody orange catch me. I didn't know if it was Carr or Coolbeth. And uh, come out, come find out it was Chris. And he got around me, showed me a high line down there in turn three and four. And I couldn't figure out, you know, where they were getting me up till then. And once he got by me, I seen that number one. I'm like, uh, that's what I wanted to try to get, you know. And uh, he's the guy I got to try to beat. So I just started pushing that hard. And had no idea. Kenny just told me he was right on our heels the whole time. And, I was trying all sorts of lines to get around Chris and finally made it happen just around the outside in turn two, I guess. Chris said uh, he didn't want to pass you when he did to show you that line. Yeah, exactly. Like he said, I got a little sideways off of four down there in the middle of three and four, and uh, you got to go by sometimes even though you don't want to, you know, to take the opportunity. And uh, I'm glad he passed me that early because it gave me a couple laps, you know, to get settled in and then get his line figured out and made it work. Tell me about the pass that you put on him to take the lead back. You know, a couple laps earlier, uh, about four or five laps before that, I went in a little high in turn one and made some time on him, and then I started following him down low in turn one and noticed I was just kind of hanging the same with him, so I thought, okay, he's got turn three and four figured out just like I do, so now we're going to work on this other end of the track and just kind of dove it in there. And It was real tacky. It's like you get in there really hot, but there was one spot that just stand your bike up and pick your foot up and real tacky, and he kind of bobbled right there, and it's enough to get a wheel in front of him, I guess. Steve Moorhead, they seem to have watched the same race that you did. Here's the way the standings go. Ken Coolbeth and the rest oh, yeah, lose points to Chris Carr, but Joe Kopp gains a few, and that's exactly what he wanted to do. Well, I'll tell you, Joe Kopp, he's just, he just ex expressed his will to win. I mean, he knows he's racing Chris for the championship, and when Chris Carr passed him, he just he dug down deep and he found something. Well, he found enough to win this one and make up some points on the man who has held the championship for the last couple of years as we continue looking at the results. Rich King with a misfortune. Let's go back to Larry Myers now with the runner-up and points leader. What can you say about that? You ran him down, you made the pass, and then he passed you back. Yeah, I was just talking to Joe about that. It's like I, was, I didn't really want to pass him when I did because I knew I'd be running a different line than he was running. And he was really good in the beginning of the race. And I was really good in the beginning, and he was just a little bit better in the end. And uh, what a fantastic race for these fans here to start to see. And, uh, you know, they did a great job this racetrack. We had a, we had a real racetrack here for change. And, uh, it was a lot of fun running with these guys, and uh, my, uh, I tip my hat to Joe, he did a good job. Yeah, I don't think anyone could say you settled for that number two position. You were after him all the way. Well, there's no doubt about it. You know, he got by me there with about three to go, and uh, I about tossed away twice trying to get back up to him. And uh, But hey, that's the way it goes. You know, uh, I didn't settle for second, and uh, you know, I, I didn't win the race, but uh, I did the best damage control. I got second. <laughs> good job. And here is the results of his work, a 25-point margin to open the second half of the season. It's comfortable, but not cozy, right, Steve? Not cozy. If Chris would have one uh, mechanical failure, you know, that would put Joe Kopp right in the hunt of things. But uh, Joe Kopp's going to need a lot of help. Particularly, perhaps, from his teammate, Ken Coolbeth. If he could have finished second, that would have been the help you needed. Let's hear from Ken. Kenny, I don't know what else you could have done. You saw a heck of a race from that number three position. They did. I was hoping that they'd mess up each other, and uh, that never happened. You know, uh, the track got really, really fast, and uh, these guys rode an awesome race. Uh, they got off ahead of me and uh, stayed ahead of me. I think that's uh, the main main deal right here is uh, getting a good start. Hard to be uh, not pleased with your performance. I think you did a good job out there. Yeah, I worked my butt off. You know, uh, we struggled during the day and uh, we came up with a setup that worked pretty good so uh, I'm happy uh, Jeff Lezinski uh, he, he's been helping me all year and uh, he's an awesome guy he can do anything for me and I said you know what uh, uh, the guy would do anything for me and uh, uh, KTM, Joe Powersport they're just awesome people. Get him next time. Yeah hopefully. A nice night for everybody. An enjoyable race here at the Black Hills Speedway in Rapid City, South Dakota. They saw a little bit of everything. Some great racing, a few incidents, and in the end, a very deserving winner, Steve Moorhead. It was. It was a chilly night for race, but the racetrack did come around, and we did see some good outside passing. And them incidents we had early, I mean, there, there was just an honest, you know, race and accident, and that's what happens when, you know, you try to stuff that many guys into the first corner at the same time. Well, it's part of what makes flat track racing so exciting and so enjoyable. We certainly hope you'll be with us next time as the Prince of Peoria leads us to the TT. My thanks to Steve Moorhead and Larry Myers. I'm Brian Drever. We'll see you there.